took place. A lot of destruction occurred. And then just nine days ago, we had Hurricane Nicole decided it wanted to traverse uh, Florida, which is extremely odd for uh, the month of November. It's only the third hurricane in, uh, since they've been keeping record of them since 1853 that has hit Florida during the month of November. It came in as a Category 1 and decided it wanted to bring with it along uh, 75 mile an hour winds and to uh, bring a lot of destruction with it. If you've seen some of the images, you realize that it came at high tide. And so not only was the tremendous uh, water and wind that was bringing with it, it the high tide in it increased the destruction that was occurring there. And the interesting part about that is the construction of the homes in Florida are much different than what we have here in the Midwest. Most of the homes in Florida are built on slabs. I did some uh, little bit of research there's only 24% of the Midwest homes are built on slabs. How many have a slab for their house? A few of you do. We've got several in our neighborhood as well. And the other interesting piece of that is if you go to Florida, you don't find basements. Why is that? Well, it's the water table. You start finding water about three feet deep. And so it's hard to dig a basement that's eight or 10 feet when it's gonna be filled with water. You'd have an in indoor swimming pool at your house, right? So the construction of homes is much different. And so when these hurricanes come through, the devastation that they bring can be much greater because the homes are constructed much differently. It made me think of a scripture that Christ talked about back in Luke chapter six. Let's go back to Luke chapter six and in verse 47. We have a very important principle that's taught for us back here. Luke six and verse 47. Christ says, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. And so he's going to give us a teaching. Verse 48, he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was well built, as the margin says, or founded on the rock as as is printed. So we have an important principle that's taught to us here. The foundation of any building is the most important part of its construction. God is building us into a spiritual house and our spiritual foundation must be stable and strong. If it is not, our relationship with God can crumble. Just like the pictures we've seen in the last several weeks since the feast of the two hurricanes and what took place. So I'd like to share three keys to building a firm spiritual foundation. Three keys to building a firm spiritual foundation. And the title is Building Our Spiritual Foundation. Point number one, pull out of verse 48 here, is to dig deep. To dig deep. Our spiritual foundation must be deep. Now what does that mean? God's truth must become a part of us. God's truth must become a part of us. It has to be deeply rooted in us. God desires that we take what we read, no matter how many times a day we divulge into God's word, that needs to become a part of us, inside, a part of our heart and a part of our mind. That's what the new covenant is about. He wants to write his laws on our heart. So it has to be put in deep. We can reference Jeremiah 31 and also Hebrews 8, the spiritual principles that are there behind this new covenant. It's the entire basis of what God desires, that his laws be a part of us. That's why he makes available the Holy Spirit. When Christ ascended back to the Father, he gave the gift of the Holy Spirit so we can have a deep connection. We can have a deep understanding and put those words inside of us. Go with me over to Psalm chapter 119. In verse 11, David gives us a beautiful scripture here back in the book of Psalms. Psalm 119, verse 11. And this was actually the Camp You Can Do theme a number of years ago. It's a really fun uh, children's song to sing along with this. Maybe I should have played it today. It's kind of neat. Psalm 119, verse 11. David says, Your word 
I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So David says he's going to hide God's word. That's a very interesting uh, word in itself. It means to protect, much like we have a treasure. You have a treasure at home that you want to protect, really hold on to, make sure nothing happens to it. That's the image that David is writing about here when he said he's hiding God's truth. And where is it? It's in his heart, in his heart. It means to store up. So we're savoring and we're appreciating what God's truth brings to us in our life, to hide it. We must make God's word a deep part of our life and our daily decisions. We don't have wisdom of our own, but God does. And he can show us and explain to us how we should make those decisions. So we have, must develop a love for the truth or we could be deceived. Point number two from the parable that Christ teaches is that we need to make it solid, to make it solid. The phrase that Christ used was, it's laid on the rock, laid the foundation on the rock. Now, who is the rock? It's Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ is the rock. We need to lay our foundation on him. I have a solid understanding of God's truth. What's that translate into? Know the book. The truth is in the book. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 15. Make it solid. So not only do we dig deep and learn about it, but we have to make it solid. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. We probably know this verse. It says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The only way we can make our understanding solid is to be versed. To know where we can find things in scripture. Could we explain the holy days and their spiritual significance? Could we explain the great meaning of the Sabbath day? Do we know where the love chapter is? Basics. Make them solid. Become versed. Know where they are. We have to do those things. This word to rightly divide means to correctly handle or to cut straight. And one of the commentaries that I read, the cutting straight re refers to like a stone builder. Cut the stone straight because you're building. The pieces have to fit to make it solid in our life. Making our knowledge and familiarity with God's truth strong will help us deal with life circumstances. We get a lot of things thrown at us and we have to understand how to navigate those things. If our understanding's not solid, what happens? We compromise, we compromise. So that takes us to point number three. Point number three that Christ mentioned in that parable in Luke is to build well. To build well. Let's go back to James chapter one. How do we build well? How do we build well? Well, James gives us an important point that we can apply. James chapter one and verse 20. He who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So we have continuing, which implies faithfulness. We have uh, not a forgetful hearer. So we're trying to remember those things. It's not easy. I, I forget a lot of things. Some, I had a conversation with someone about two weeks ago, and in the middle of the conversation, a thought just vanished. That doesn't happen to anyone. It happened to me. Never had it happen. Not a forgetful hearer, but what does he say? A doer. We have to do God's laws because God wants us to put them into practice, and that's how we build. 
we build character, we build trust, we build faith, and reliance upon our Father. I really like what the Life Application Study Bible said. It says we can measure the effectiveness of our study time by the effect it has on our behavior and our attitudes. Do you put into action what you've studied? Pretty simple. We read, we learn, and then we try to do. And in the process of all that, we're building. We're building to take the principles and apply them. And what happens? We grow fruit. We grow fruit. The fruits of the spirit that God is after, desiring to see in our life. Now, we're not going to be perfect. We never will. But the idea is we build. So we try. And we keep trying. We don't quit. We keep trying. Continuing to build and apply God's truth. We've seen the destruction that's taken place with the hurricanes. And in the bigger picture, our world is really built with no foundation. It's built on lies that Satan promotes. And God shows us, in fact, verse 49, we're not going to read it, it's going to fall. The whole system that, God, that Satan has made, that man has built, it's going to crumble. That verse talks about in an individual sense and also in a collective sense of what God will do. And the prophecies that we read about, the system that mankind has will crumble. Jesus Christ is going to return. And he's going to establish God's kingdom. Are we building? Are we applying God's truth? Are we constructing our foundation? Put God's truth deep into your life. Make it solid, the understanding and the knowledge, and build well using the great truth of God.